Hi everyone, welcome back to Homeschool Peace. I'm Cassandra and today I'm gonna to be walking you through putting together one of the good and the beautiful science or health units and give you some great tips on how you can organize your information. When you first receive your good and the beautiful unit, you are going to want to open it up. The covers are always so beautiful, but resist the temptation. Don't open up the shrink wrap package until you're ready to really build out your unit. So you are going to need some simple office supplies and have some things on hand before you start building. So I have a list below in the video notes of a shopping list of things that you'll need to have to be actually be able to build out this unit. And everybody builds them out a little bit different ways. Some people use print shops, some people get things bound. Mine is very simple. And so hopefully you can take a look at my shopping list get some of those supplies on hand before you open up that shrink wrap package. That shrink wrap package, the information that you'll receive is not bound, it's not stapled. Everything is just very loose. So as soon as you open that up, pages can go everywhere. And then you also wanna make sure that you have time to really build that out. I would really recommend when your kids are not home or maybe your kids have gone to bed at night, set up on a big table or maybe the floor of your living room and just set out everything that you're going to need before you start really digging into the package that you received. Now that you have all of your office supplies gathered and that you have some dedicated time to really build out that unit, you wanna first start with your teacher manual. So part of the supply list that I included in this video was to purchase a three ring binder to use as your teacher guide. So this could be maybe a two inch or a three inch binder and you wanna have that set up and ready to go. So when you unwrap your shrink wrap package, the first five or six sheets are simply just teacher information. So you want to hole punch those and put those right into your teacher manual. The very first thing that you'll come across as something to laminate is going to be your vocabulary words. So your vocabulary words are used for your science wall. This could be in your homeschool room that you're going to use say sticky tack and stick up to your wall and have all your vocabulary words listed. Or this could be something that you could use on a foam core board and have those vocab words listed for your kids to look at, but you do wanna have those laminated. So go ahead and take the step of running all those vocab sheets through your laminator, cut those out. Now where I like to store those vocabulary words is in a simple zipper pouch that you can purchase to go with your three ring binder. If you really do not wanna purchase a zipper pouch, you can always, say, always get away with using Ziploc bags. Those would be fine. So go ahead, laminate all your vocabulary words, cut those out and get those tucked away in that pouch or in your Ziploc bag. After you've gone through all the vocabulary words and those are tucked away, now you can actually start with your lessons. So there are a different number of lessons per the different units. What I like to do is use either a page divider or you can use little page stickers and I can write lesson one, lesson two, going down on the little stickers. And that just helps whenever you're trying to say maybe to jump from lesson one to lesson five, that's just gonna help you find where you're at. So I would recommend when you're putting that first lesson into your teacher guide, put some type of divider there. I also like to add a page protector there, or you can also get a pouch or a pocket folder for each lesson, depending on how much room you have in your binder. I use the page protectors because they are so thin and I stick one page protector in the front of each lesson. And that just gives me a little pocket, just whenever there's an activity or maybe some game cards for that particular lesson, I can slide those right into that little page protector pouch and that just helps hold that together for that lesson. So now if you're looking at your material and you see your lesson one, you're gonna see first some teacher information that would be about the lesson, maybe things that you're supposed to read as well as the science experiments. Anything that you see for lesson one that is simply a teacher page, go ahead and hole punch those and you're gonna put that right in for lesson one in your parent three ring binder. The next thing that you might come across is a mini book. They're just going to look like pieces of the eight and a half by 11 sheets, but almost like a line going through the middle of them. And they're going to have a front cover and either a back cover or just the last sheet of the mini book. 
So you can choose how you wanna build your mini books. I try to keep mine really simple. I simply will cut that mini book, all the pages in half on those lines, and then I will take my front cover and my back cover and I will laminate them. I do this because I just wanna use a staple to be able to staple my book together. Some families will go a little bit more fancy and will take those mini books to an actual print company and have them actually bind those books together with like a spiral bound. I think that looks great. For my family, I just try to keep it simple, and so I just use a stapler, but you'll wanna go through your, say that first lesson, if you come through and see a mini book, go ahead and pull those out and go ahead and start the process of building that mini book. While still on one of those first lessons, you might come across some pictures of maybe famous paintings, or it could be a diagram that you to share with your kids. You could also come into maybe some games or some activity cards. If you come across anything that looks like your child is gonna probably be holding it or you're passing it around with your family or a game that you're going to play, any of those pieces you will want to laminate. When you have little pieces that are sort of small game type activities, I like to use just some paper clips and put those together and put those right inside either that pocket or for mine is that page protector that I put at the beginning of the lesson. I will save those right with each lesson as I'm building it out. So while you're going through your lesson, if you run into any of those things, just start pulling those out and laminating any activities that your kids are going to touch. The final thing that you may see in that lesson one is some student activity sheets. Now in the beginning of each unit, they do recommend creating a student binder. So each student should have their own binder book. This could be maybe a half inch or a one inch small three ring binder. Or for in my family, we actually use the three prong folders. I know that means that you can't pull the sheets in and out on a three prong folder, which is a disadvantage. But for my family, I just wanted something smaller and easy to tuck away. I didn't want a bulky binder for each kid. So do whatever works for you, but you'll want to create a student book for each of your kids. So you'll come across what will be a student worksheet. You'll know it's a student worksheet by the activity that you'll see on the page. You'll see spots where the kid is supposed to write or maybe lines where they're supposed to write information. That'll give you the clue that that's definitely one of their student worksheets. I would highly recommend not providing any of the student worksheets that's in that teacher guide, the, the, the main teacher guide that you're building or that packet that you got from the good and the beautiful. I don't give those sheets to my kids because I like to keep one clean printed copy that no one touches and that stays in my teacher guide. So now you have some options for how you can actually build out your student binders or those student three prong folders. So you can go and each lesson as you teach, you can just simply open up your teacher binder, pull that one student worksheet out, and if you have a copy printer at your home, you can just copy that one sheet at a time and then have that ready for that next day lesson. So that's a very simple way of going through doing one lesson at a time. If you're the type of parent who really likes to have it put together before you start, you can go into the PDF that you would have received from The Good and the Beautiful, make a uh, note of every single worksheet that you can by page number that your child is going to use as going through the lesson. And you can just print those up right off your computer, get the three ring hole punch, stick that right into your either student binder or that folder and have every worksheet ready ahead of time. The last option is one that I used for a while is that I actually went through the PDF, pulled out any of the student pages that I know they're going to need to do, create a new PDF, and I sent that PDF over to my pr local print shop and had them just run off three copies of each of those pages and then ha picked it up from my print shop so I didn't have to use my home printer. I think all those are valid options, either doing it as you go through the lesson, if you're more of a mom who likes to do one thing at a time, or getting them printed ahead of time. As of late, I do more of the option of the one at a time. I do find it a little simpler than trying to dig through a big PDF and creating a new PDF and sending it to a print shop. It's just easier for me to pop it out right out of my teacher manual, go ahead and do the copier right from my house, and then I just have those for the next day. So either way, you'll wanna start building out your student binders. Now that you've put together your very first lesson within that unit, you're going to continue this same process through all the different lessons through the unit 
finishing up your teacher manual, going ahead and building out your student binder. For your student binders, other things that I like to add into there, I'll just add some extra white pieces of paper if they wanted to sketch or draw anything, as well as just some blank notebook pages. Those are great to put in that binder as well. But at this point, you should be set up with your, both your teacher manual as well as then set up with your student books. The next step that you need is to get the books ready for reading to your kids. Now they recommend some really great readers, part of the program, you'll see that in the very beginning of the teacher manual and books that you can pick up. You can easily go ahead and purchase those books or you can simply use books that you have or use your library. I like to use a lot of our Usborne books. If we're talking about the water cycle, I have a lot of Usborne books about weather and the water cycle. So I'll just go around my home library and I'll pull out any of the books regarding the topic of the unit that we're going into and get those built into a nice basket ready to go. I'll also go ahead and pull some books from my local library or request some books on that topic, whether they're the ones that are recommended in the actual teacher guide or they're just ones that I can find in my library on that same topic. And I'll just gather as many books as I can to be ready to start my lessons. The last thing you'll need to pull together to be ready to teach for your science is the supplies for the science experiments. Most of the science experiment supplies are pretty simple, things that you probably have already sitting around your house or in your craft closet. Some of the things you will have to purchase and be and pull together ahead of time. So one of the units I did, I actually sat and I went through every single supply that I needed and I pulled them from my craft supplies as well as purchased the items I needed and ended up creating a pretty large box of science supplies. It was nice having those already on hand, but then it also just caused some trouble of where to store all those science supplies. So what I have found is it just works really well for just going maybe one to two lessons ahead. I have a drawer that I use for our science supplies and I will just look ahead from the lesson and if there's something that I need to get from the grocery store, I'll just get that and I'll just go one to two lessons ahead then the next week I'll go and I'll read and see what I need for the next couple lessons. And that has worked really well. And so I'm only pulling just a few lessons at a time, storing those supplies, and then we end up using it. So go ahead, I would recommend probably and look through the first maybe one to three lessons, see if there's anything that you'll need to pick up from the store and go ahead and either order those supplies or go pick them up and just store them and get ready to teach your science lessons. That is how I put together my science and health units for the good and the beautiful. And if you have any questions on how I put these together or what I use or the products I use or things that I like to do, just leave those questions and comments below. And go ahead before you leave and don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe and I will talk to you later. Goodbye.